Alright, hey, I'm the developer of the game, <clears throat> I've never done anything like this before, but I thought it'd be cool to just hide this in the game here, I'm just going to be uh, poking around the files, so I'm actually, I haven't finished the game yet as of recording this, as you can see I only have a few of the ending videos down here, but yeah, I don't know, I just thought I'd do some behind the scenes. So, this is the title screen here. Not much to look at. So let's go over to the plant room. Poke around here. Yeah, so this was before I found out that uh, Modus actually made some shaders for the caustics on the wall. So I just, they're actually a separate model here. Let's see. Yeah, look at that. 
Of course, we have our, our friend back here. We can. There he is. As you can see, I, I didn't know what to call him, so I, I just called him Guy. Plant Room Guy. Um, and actually, let's see if I can find this. Let's see if it's still in here. Yeah, okay. So I cut this out of the room because I thought it didn't really match the scenery very well, but there's a fountain. I put a fountain in the game. We can take a little look at it in game, of course. Look at that. It does look pretty nice. Maybe I'll use it in something someday. I don't know. All right, let's let's go ahead and move on to the hub world. Yeah. So I remember not really knowing what to do with this door here. So. I just kind of left it floating in the air. I didn't want to make it outside of the plant room or anything, and I think it worked out. I think it's, I think it adds to it. Here we have our friend over here. Everyone thinks this is a cat, but actually it was supposed to be a raccoon. That's why he's named Raccoon in the, over here. But uh, it does, it does not look like a raccoon very much. I originally tried to texture his head with like realistic raccoon fur and everything and it uh, did not work out at all. Not even a little bit. And uh, early in playtesting actually we've, I found out that you could just walk up the walls and just fall down into the pit down here and I thought you know what I'll just I'll just hide something down there. I'm not even gonna get rid of that. Yep. And uh, I I placed this area up here behind the two bushes because I I just really wanted to have a nice little secret in this first starting area. It's kind of inspired by the uh, there's there's a caves. In, in Lego Island. There's like a door that was that's inaccessible. That's just really mysterious. And, and I love little alcoves and little holes and stuff like that. So that's why that's there. Alright. Uh, this is one of the later ones I made. I The well actually used to be placed over here. And you could only access it by getting up on the plant, getting up here, and then jumping down into it. But I thought, you know, I kind of want it to be accessible really early on so that you wouldn't have to jump through a bunch of hoops just to get there. So here it is. It's right here. I experimented with having more light shafts, but I felt it was a bit too much. So just kept it like that. Oh, the gravestone here, the text there, it's actually, it says a few things. It says Lorem Ipsum, and then it says, uh, I believe L is real, 2401, as a reference to uh, some rumors surrounding a certain Nintendo 64 game. And uh, I forgot what the last bit says, but yeah. So, so I just put some filler text there. This kanji here actually translates to birch. Um, and in the nightmare zone, it's different. You see, it's... it uh, that, that means, I believe, to have a nightmare. And this area, the graphical... I guess intensity of it or whatever um, kind of came about by accident. I, I didn't intend to even have this area in the game at first. I didn't plan for it, but uh, 
I accidentally dragged the render texture material onto the walls inside of Cherry Blossom and I just thought it looked neat. So I decided to make a whole area based around that. Over here, oh shoot. Uh, here, let's. Over here, I, I, I thought it'd be cool to hide a character based on the vertex snapping of it being like so intense that the further you get away from it, it just basically becomes invisible. But this closer you get, there he is. He's really unstable. This character doesn't really uh, have a lot to do in the game, but you know, I just thought it'd be cool to hide him there. Add a bit of flavor, if you will. This is a really cool place to uh, develop the only high poly asset in here, in the whole game right here. The soup cans. I really don't know why I chose soup cans, but uh, yeah, there they are. Of course, this is a picture of me that I just used for the scientist. Yep. And on this board here, we actually have some stock photos that were on the title screen, actually, like over here and here. Uh, this right here is the painting that is hung up in the Cherry Blossom area. That's the Unity logo, of course. This is the letter that you receive or that you just have in your inventory at the start of the game. This is, of course, the eyeball symbol that relates to the plant room and the churches and all that. This right here is a picture of the, the body stuck in the wall that's in the uh, suburbia area, which you might as well check out. Or not the suburbia, the house area. Yeah, here we are. So originally I was gonna have the mom's face scroll between a few different arrangements like this, kind of inspired by the land of the living and Grim Fandango. But uh, I don't know, I just accidentally had it scrolling in two directions. And that just scrolls through her whole texture there. Like you can see the, the hair texture and the faces show up. And I just, I don't know, that looked a bit more chaotic. And uh, I decided to keep it. Hopefully people will see that and think it's unintentional. But uh, yeah, there's the image that was on the the uh, the cork board, the conspiracy board, if you will. All right, now let's check out suburbia. So this area is a bit interesting because I wanted to give off the vibe that it goes on forever, but it's actually very small and it just teleports you as you're walking through it. So right here is the player's position, as you can see. And but here, let's set this up so that we can see all of it. Turn off the fog. Okay. Yeah, so right there is the player's position. Right there is the player's position. And as we walk, we hit a trigger that teleports us back. And this works in either direction. Yep. And as you keep going, uh, eventually it'll detect that you've walked enough to uh, let you go on into the lab. Might as well take a little peek. We got a gazebo, the ocean, which maybe doesn't go out as far as you might think. Yep. The sand texture down there is a little messy. You know, you can see the seams of it, but you know, you can get away with that sort of thing. The submarine here. All right, ocean floor. Let's look at this one. Let's turn off the fog again. Turn off, turn down the. Turn 
up the cutout distance. Why not? Look at that. That's the whole area. You got the, the walls stretch out about that much. There you go. Hope somebody's interested in that. Well, uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this stupid little behind the scenes, me messing around little video that I hid in the game. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. Maybe you got something out of it. Maybe you didn't. I don't know. I just thought it'd be a, a fun little thing to do, I guess. Uh, anyway, yeah, I hope you have a good day. Hope you enjoyed the game. If you didn't, that's all right. Yeah, I don't know what else to say. So, uh, bye.